A list in MailChimp is where we add all our contacts. So that when we come to creating our actual marketing campaigns, whatever type of marketing campaign we're creating, whether that's email marketing, a postcard and so on, we send or create the marketing campaign for a list or a part of a list, which we call a segment or maybe a tag and so on. So what we do is we add all our contacts, everyone we know regarding our business, our charity, whatever, into a list and then we divide up our list. And so in the next three videos, I'll be going through how to create a list, how to add people, uh, how to change the settings on lists and so on. So I thoroughly recommend you watch all three videos. Let's dive into MailChimp itself. Up the top in the menu bar in MailChimp, we have the word lists and that's where our lists are kept. Now some of us might see the word audience there. MailChimp is trialing at the moment. Uh, working with the word audience and changing it very slightly, but the principles remain exactly the same. So I'm going to click on lists to go into my list section. I already have a list. Now I can have as many lists as I want in, in, uh, in MailChimp, but best practice for most people is to have a single list. We then divide up the list and I'll show how to do that. But for now, let's just assume we don't have a list. So I'll create a new list just to explain what goes into creating a list. So I'm going to quite simply click create a list or create list. Tags I will explain later. So I'll just create a list for now. The first really important thing is now what we do is we just work from the top and we work down. The first really important thing is as MailChimp says there, your subscribers will see this. Honestly, I don't know how many people I've worked with um, that use MailChimp that have named their list something not entirely appropriate or something not entirely meaningful. For example, uh, I was delivering training, I think, in Melbourne a few months ago, and I unsubscribed to an email campaign uh, during the class, and this is what I saw. So what we can see here is I was or am on the less annoying spelled incorrectly list. So the name does show, so be very, very careful. And by the way, this form I will explain in a later video how to uh, brand it for your own purposes. But just be very careful what you name your list. And I suppose it was a compliment that I was on the less annoying and not most annoying list, but anyway. Okay, so in this case, I'll just call it uh, Gary's Dog Coats, for example, assuming I'm selling dog coats. So you'd call it your, your company name or your business name or something like that. Your from email address, um, this will just, yeah, this is self-explanatory really. The from name, people need to recognize who this is from. So you could go something like, let's go Gary the dog guy. Campaign URL settings. When we send an email through MailChimp, a version of our email is kept online. On a URL so please don't send any personal information uh, by email this can this, this URL setting we can change to make it something more meaningful uh, most of my clients just just leave it however it, it's up to you remind people how they signed up to your list we need to put something here that's meaningful that people understand so um, thanks for joining our list via, I don't know, via our subscribe, something. Contact information. Now, please, if you work from home, if you have a home business, don't put your home address because this may well be publicly visible. Form settings, enable double opt-in. Um, this used to be mandatory and the default. So what this means is if you enable this, when people subscribe to your list, they'll be sent another email saying, please click this link to subscribe. The problem is a lot of people don't click that. So unless you have a need to do it, um, I advise not enabling double opt-in. Enable GDPR fields, um, GDPR, uh, uh, European Union uh, privacy directives, regulations. If you need to do that, then you need to enable this. If you're in the Euro European Union or you know you need to enable your GDPR fields. Notifications. 
Do you want to know uh, every time someone subscribes and unsubscribes and so on? That's up to you. Look, we can change all this information afterwards. So I'll just click save to, to, uh, to save this list, create this list. I'll just click on lists to show where I am. And you'll see I now have my new list. For those of you that already have a list that you want to change the details for, the settings, so if you want to change the name, for example, of your list, we just go into our list itself. So I've just clicked on the name of the list. You can click settings and for example, you could change your list name there, uh, required email footer content if you want to change that field that reminds people how they subscribed and so on. But I'm going to click on lists again. Now that we have our list, our container, we need to add people, add contacts, add subscribers. Um, the word subscribers and contacts is used interchangeably in MailChimp, but I guess we should really think of them as contacts because they're not just people that subscribe to our marketing. We, we kind of add everyone into our list so that we can use different means of marketing to people. So for example, um, if a person has subscribed to receive our email that's great if they then unsubscribe from our email it doesn't mean necessarily they don't want to or or we can't show them our Facebook ads for example so even if someone is unsubscribed we can still market to them in other ways and and I will go through that a bit later so now that we have our list Gary's dog coats we need to add people so I'm just going to click on the name of my list to view my list to go into my container my list we have various uh, uh, buttons or things we can do at the top manage contacts add contacts and so on so if I click add contacts you'll see I can add a subscriber add a person one by one or I can import contacts there are three ways or three categories of ways we can add people into MailChimp we can add them one by one so someone calls you on the phone and you add them and I, I will demonstrate that we can import people from or add them from an Excel spreadsheet or maybe a CSV file, and I'll demonstrate that uh, a few times. And the third way is something called an integration. An integration is the tools you use for your business every day. That might be your accounting platform, that might be Eventbrite, that might be uh, your CRM, your e-commerce, and so on. And what we do is we connect them and MailChimp and your, your tool talk to each other and people are added automatically to MailChimp so you don't have to do it manually. MailChimp have what's called an integrations directory so it's just at MailChimp.com sorry backslash integrations and for example if I go down if I just scroll down the page we can search for various integrations there are so if I for example if I use a CRM I could type CRM and just see what is available um, so if you used, for example, Salesforce, we could click on that, learn how to connect the two together so that you don't have to manually add people. But we're not going to go into integrations for now. Saying that, however, there is one really great integration that a lot of my clients find very useful. It's actually a sign-up form for a tablet. It's called MailChimp Subscribe. It's a MailChimp developed app for a tablet, an iOS or Android tablet. And you basically very quickly can create a sign up form on your tablet. You've probably already seen this, to be honest, at your local coffee shop, at your cinema. What they do is, or what you could do is you, you load this app up, very quickly create a sign up form, and people can then add their details to the tablet. Best of all, it doesn't have to be online all the time, your tablet. It'll save the people's information, and next time you connect uh, to to the internet, it'll upload those details, those people's details to your MailChimp list for you. So that's pretty awesome. But for now, let's add, let's add some people via a, a CSV file. CSV is, or Excel is very, very common. Um, and that's how a lot of people add uh, their contacts to MailChimp. So I'm going to start off and first do a very simple import of people just their first name and just email address I'm then going to get a little bit more complicated where some people are the same we've got some new people and we add various different new columns to meet your business needs and that's very very common 
Going back to MailChimp, I'm in my list, so I'm just going to click on lists just to demonstrate it. I'm just going to click on my list name. Although we can't see it here, we actually have five fields already in our list. First name, last name, email address, address, and phone number. We can add up to 30 columns of data uh, in, into a list. If you're on MailChimp Pro, which is an add-on, you can have up to 80 columns or fields of data. The email address is mandatory. We have to have an email address for each person we add to our list. In addition, the email address needs to be unique. So we can't have the same email twice in the list, in a single list. So let's import, let's import this basic list for now. So back to MailChimp. So to add people, I go add contacts. I'm not adding them one by one, which I will demonstrate a little bit later. I'm going to import my contacts for now. And what we do now is we just follow the wizard basically. Um, and you'll see the next button down the bottom of the screen, but we follow it. So how do we want to import them? So we could copy and paste, but I'm going to import from a CSV file for now. So I click next. I find my file. And click open and click next so just following the prompts I mentioned that we have those five default fields first name last name email address address and phone number I can add more fields but for now MailChimp is saying to me okay match up these columns so in your spreadsheet this was first name is this the first name field now MailChimp is is clever in that it, it to a degree recognizes what fields we're trying to match up if that, this weren't correct, I could click edit and we'll see this uh, on my next import. I'll, I will do this manually, but it is correct for now. It's the first name. So that's all fine. Is this the email address? Yes, it is. If it weren't, I could click edit and select a different field. But for now, I'll just click next. If I if, if there were any errors, um, there would be a yellow or a, or a red mark here and we'd have to address those errors. Tags, I will explain in the next video. You will almost always import people as subscribed. I hazard to say you will always import them as subscribed, but I will describe what um, subscribed and unsubscribed and so on means in a short while. So I'll just click import. MailChimp imports the people for me. So just to show where I am, I'll click lists. I'll click on my list name and there we go we have our four people but now we can see our columns email address first name last name address phone number tags I'll explain and so on let's do another import so it's next month for example now some people are the same I've got some additional information for people I've got new fields and so on and this is very typical so so let's import this we don't need to delete people that we already have on our list in MailChimp that we have on our importing list. We don't need to delete people from our importing list. Nothing like that. We, we can handle it. Just let, let, let's carry on with this and I'll show you what we do. So we go add contacts, just as we did last time. Import contacts. I could use my settings from my last import, but I do have new fields. So I'll start again. CSV or delimited. Click next. Find my file. So I'm just following the prompts. Click next. You can see now that MailChimp is asking me to, to match up the fields. It's matched up those ones it knows of. First name, email address. It doesn't know what country is. So I click edit. I can click the down arrow. Now, on my available column names, I don't have a country field at this time. So I can create a new column. And once I create a new column, it'll be there in the future for me to, re to, to use in the future. 
It's a new column name. I could change the name now, but I'll just call it country for now. And click save. I'll do this to, sorry, click save again and do this to the next field. What is this person's dog's name? And I'll create a new column name because I don't have an existing dog's name. So new column name, save, and I'll save that again. Do this, are there an existing customer? And I'll just create a new column. I'm doing this fairly quickly, but it's, it's simple enough. Average spend, new column name. Because this is a number, I need to change my field type to be number. This then enables me, when I create my segments, my targeting, I can then do, for example, search between a range such as over $100 and under $200. Or if you've got postcodes, for example, or zip codes um, in a numeric format, you would choose number. Or if you're in the US, you would choose a zip code if you're doing the zip codes. Click Save. Last but not least, uh, my dog's birthday, and I will create a new column. Uh, sorry, new column name. My dog's birthday, you'll notice I have 4th of January there for my the first dog's birthday. Um, a birthday is a date. We have two types under field type. We have two types of dates in, in MailChimp, types of fields of dates. We have date and birthday. The difference between the two is that for birthday, we don't need to add the year. So in this case, I don't have the year, so I'll select birthday. Click Save. Right, so just checking, have I matched up my columns? Yes, I have. I click Next. Everything's green. I'll explain tags later. I'm importing as subscribed. This is really important. Sync with existing contacts. Update existing contacts. If any imported contacts are already on your list, we'll automatically update the information with the data you import. So if you have a, let's call it a source of truth, a CRM contact database outside of MailChimp, and you constantly bring in the information to update your list in MailChimp, you will always check that. So now we'll click Import. Always read the message at the top of the screen. 20 contacts were updated or added and one email wasn't valid or role-based. Ah, a role-based email address. A lot of people get caught up in this. Uh, a role-based email address, and I just know that the problem, I could click uh, one email and view that email where I have a problem, but I just know that it's, it's um, an email address that starts with admin. That's called a role-based email address. We can't import from Excel, CSV file, role-based email addresses into MailChimp. A role-based email address are those shared mailboxes, support at, uh, accounts at, IT at, webmaster at, uh, all those usual, admin at, all those usual suspects. The reason being is that there's a high chance that emails being sent to shared mailboxes are marked as spam. Because if you and I, for example, share a mailbox, I subscribe to something uh, using the, the admin at, you then open that email and say, I did not subscribe to this and mark it as spam. But I can add role-based email addresses individually, one by one, and on most integrations, they come through. So if you uh, use Google Contact and you integrate with MailChimp, for example, they will come through most likely from Google Contacts or from WooCommerce or whatever your external tool is, if you have an integration. But for now, I'll show how we can add these role-based addresses one by one. So we go add contacts, add a subscriber, and I can just add people individually. So this is the way we add people one by one. And I could fill in all the other fields. MailChimp says to me, um, did this person give me permission to send to them? And I'll click subscribe. So I'm just going to, uh, sorry, I'm just going to click on lists. And just to reiterate where I am, click on my list name again. And if I scroll, I'll, I'll just go to the next screen. And you'll see now that admin has been added. Something important is this source column. So we have various different fields in our list. The source column is important because this tells us 
how the person was added to our list. So if you do use Eventbrite and integrate with MailChimp, so people, as people buy tickets for your event, they're automatically added to um, MailChimp, you will see the source as uh, Eventbrite, for example. So we can tell how people were added to our list. Email marketing column is also very important. We can have one of four values, one of four values in the email marketing column. Subscribed, unsubscribed, cleaned, and then empty, no, nothing value. So subscribed, unsubscribed, cleaned, and a nothing value. Subscribed means we can send the person email marketing. So related to email marketing, as it says. Subscribe means we can send them email marketing. In MailChimp, our monthly uh, subscription, we pay per subscribed people, contacts. Per subscribed contacts not unsubscribed and so on. So we have subscribed, who we can send email marketing to. We have unsubscribed. Those are people that have clicked unsubscribe. So MailChimp automatically, for legal reasons, includes an unsubscribe link at the bottom of each um, email campaign that sent them. So if they've clicked that unsubscribed, they're marked as unsubscribed. Cleaned means uh, there's been a bounce. So what's bounce, sorry. So what's happened is MailChimp has sent an email to uh, to that email address and it's come back as undeliverable. Maybe the spelling's wrong, maybe the person's left their job or whatever. The fourth value is a null value, a nothing value. That is related purely to e-commerce. So if you've integrated your e-commerce store, Shopify, LemonStand, WooCommerce, Magento and so on, and a customer has not agreed to get email marketing. They still added to your list in MailChimp, but they're not marked as subscribed because they haven't subscribed. Because remember, we add everyone into our one single list, even if they're not subscribed and so on, because we can always market to them using Google remarketing ads or postcards and so on. So email marketing is very, very, very important column. If you do need to delete people out of your list, you can quite simply click on their names and click delete. Keep in mind that if you delete someone from your list, there's a chance that when you create an import again into your list, you will add that person as subscribed once again. If you unsubscribe a person, you cannot manually override that status. So for example, if if I try and import people as subscribed that are marked as unsubscribed in my list, even though I'm trying to import them as subscribed, it will not overwrite the unsubscribed or clean for that matter status. So there's no danger of trying to import people into MailChimp that are unsubscribed in your list. It will not override that status. One more thing that's important as well here is that if someone has unsubscribed, and I don't have an example, but I will show you. If I go into, into someone's uh, um, profile sorry so I've just clicked on someone's name if they have unsubscribed you can click actions and you'll have here resubscribe or send reconfirmation email or something like that so in that case what will happen it'll send the person a uh, an email saying click here to resubscribe people can also resubscribe themselves via a MailChimp contact uh, MailChimp subscribe form one very last thing on this video anyway, before we get into the sort of intermediate things. If we go into our list, at any time we can export our list. So we can export to CSV and MailChimp will give you uh, various files, CSV files. Uh, it'll give you a file for subscribe people, unsubscribed, cleaned, and those that don't have any value in that field, customers. So those are the basics of lists. Please join me for the next video because in the next video, we're going to look at how we divide up our list and target our marketing.